Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Wednesday. So I've said that I wanted to wait until the entire story of GameStop's crazy short squeeze uh, and now the fact that it's becoming mainstream media. I'm going to wait until all the dust has settled before I make a full video on that. But some advice that I got from my dad was that when your Uber driver starts giving you advice on investing in the stock market, it's usually time to start panicking. And based off of what I've been seeing on Twitter today, pretty much everyone that I follow, whether it be a sports person, a an esports player. Some of my friends are all talking about GameStop. And now this seems to be like the fever is becoming uh, more mainstream now. So I'm starting to get a little bit worried. So if you're still holding, congrats, you've made a lot of money, but I'm expecting this bubble to pop eventually. But this is a very interesting story that I'm going to be talking about in depth once uh, the bubble eventually pops. Today, I wanted to talk about a stock that I've been eyeing as one of my favorite stocks to buy going into February. This is a stock that is very well established and has actually had a pretty decent year in 2020 given the circumstances. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about Disney, ticker symbol DIS, because I think it has a fantastic opportunity going forward, especially if the market does pull back a little bit. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about three different parts about Disney stock. I'm gonna be talking about the recent news uh, with the recent earnings reports. Then we're gonna hop onto the computers and talk about what I see with the technical analysis of Disney stock. And then finally, I'm gonna give my outlook for the next year and kind of where I think Disney stock is gonna be going in the future and how I'm gonna be playing it going forward. I will disclose that I do not own any Disney stock at this time and I have not owned any Disney stock for at least six months. Also a reminder that there are timestamps in the description below if you'd like to bounce around. And just a reminder that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Anything you hear in this video is just me giving my own opinions on the stock market and need to do your own research before making any investment decisions. Also, if you've been enjoying these videos, really appreciate it for the like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. So let's start this video talking about the history of Disney because unlike a lot of the top blue chip stocks, uh, stuff like an Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Disney got hit pretty hard in 2020. So here's what the five-year chart looks like, and you can see that it did have a pretty big uh, pullback when the pandemic started back in March. And then there's the all-time chart. Comparing it to the S&P 500, that has returned 6.5% on a compound annual growth rate, Disney has done very well, returning just shy of 10%, which is very impressive. So I want to talk about the last couple earnings reports because they've made some interesting moves before the pandemic actually hit, and that has set them up very well to succeed in the future. So in May of 2019, Disney buys the rights to 21st Century Fox for $71 billion. That gives them the rights to Fox Film and TV Studios, National Geographic, and FX. Uh, and that also means that they have the rights to the best Christmas movie of all time with Die Hard. This comes after they spent $15 billion total to get the rights to uh, Star Wars, the Marvel Universe, and Pixar. And because of the size of the Fox deal, Disney started to protect themselves by pausing the share buyback program. And so in the short term, this hurts the stock because they are not buying back the stock. Uh, what share buyback means is that they're buying the existing stocks out there and taking it out of circulation. What that does is it increases the value of all the existing shares because there's less shares out there and the value of the company stays the same. So in the short term, this hurts the company. But in the long term, the fact that they're growing their business is always a fantastic move. But from 2009 to 2018, Disney spent almost $48 billion in stock buyback. So they've been very aggressive in the past. And since they have paused this, it's going to be interesting to compare the upcoming years with the lack of share buybacks compared to what they've done from 2009 to 2018. This deal from Fox put a big strain on Disney's long-term debt that pushed them up to $47 billion in long-term debt. And then they increased this debt by $11 billion during the pandemic that pushes them just shy of $53 billion in long-term debt. However, when you look at their shareholder equity, I don't think this is anything to be really worried about at this point, considering their debt to equity ratio is sitting at 0.6, which is still very low, but they have been increasing their debt rapidly. The fact that this happened before the pandemic, I think set them up uh, to succeed going forward because they've already started to protect themselves by stopping their share buyback program. Uh, and so they were already kind of in the cash saving mode uh, when the pandemic hit. And then as you go into 2020, as you can expect, the pandemic was not kind to Disney overall. And you can see that specifically with their parks. From this chart, you can see the huge drop in revenue overall and how bad it was for the parks uh, and experience segment of their business. It's expected that they lost $2.4 billion in operating income from the, the closure of the parks in 2020, so that's a huge hit. As a result, they announced back in March that they're going to be pausing their semi-annual dividend. Uh, this is kind of similar to what they did with the share buyback program after they acquired Fox. Uh, it's just to try to hold on to as much cash as possible. And from doing that, even though the dividend is pretty small, sitting under 2%, uh, it does save $1.6 billion for every dividend that they would have paid out, which is every six months. So in total, they're saving $3.2 billion annually. So a very solid move. In November, they announced that they were going to be continuing the suspension of the dividend. 
And so it's going to be very interesting with the upcoming earnings report in early February to kind of see how the company is feeling about the the potential of reestablishing that dividend, because I think that is a very important bull case to look at going forward. As I mentioned, it's not a huge dividend of just shy of 2%, but there are a lot of people that buy these blue chip companies that have the reliable growth. As I mentioned, it has returned 10% on a compound annual growth rate uh, when you've reinvested the dividends. So spending the dividend is never a good thing. It's usually seen as a way to protect the company. And especially during a pandemic, I think it was expected for the company to do that. So that's something I'm gonna be watching going into the next earnings report to hear what they have to say about the possibility of reestablishing that dividend. So here's the overall revenue chart that shows the massive dip that they saw in 2020. And here's the revenue by sources in 2020. And putting that side by side with the operating income by segment, you can see a couple really interesting things that I wanted to talk about. For one, Parks ended up being barely positive for their operating income. And I wanna talk about the direct to consumer segment because this is the area that includes Disney Plus. And Disney Plus has really been the thing that has kept Disney stock alive in 2020 and going into 2021. So Disney Plus was announced in April of 2019 and the goal was to hit 60 million paid subscribers by the end of fiscal 2024. From the last earnings report that they announced in November, the company has already surpassed that goal with 73 million uh, active uh, paying subscribers. So they've definitely outperformed the pace that they were expecting. And as a result, that has pushed the stock up significantly. And it is one of the main bright spots when it comes to Disney's business in 2020. Looking at the number of subscribers for Disney's streaming services across Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus, you can see that they're still pretty far behind uh, something like a Netflix, but it's closer than a lot of people would have expected. I don't expect this gap to shrink significantly in the next couple years, but Disney has done an incredible job of bringing in subscribers. And based off of the amount of money that they've paid to uh, get the rights to the Marvel Universe, Star Wars, and now that they've announced all of these new series and programs, I think this is going to be a really important part of their business going forward. And I think the share price has reflected that. So as I showed with the operating income that I'll put up again, this is not a profitable part of their business yet, as they lost $2.8 billion in the fiscal year. And the peak losses are expected to happen in 2022, and it's not expected to be profitable until 2024. And in December, they announced a bunch of new content and a price increase for Disney Plus, and that shot the stock price up significantly. So when I look at Disney Plus, I think this is a great way to look at the bright future of Disney. Right now, if you just focus on the negativity of the pandemic and the fact that they missed out on, what was it, two point something billion dollars from the parks being shut down, it does not look very good. But the Disney Plus results and the outlook of it for the next couple of years is very positive. And I think that's a huge reason why a lot of investors are kind of brushing over the pain of 2020 and a reason why the stock was actually positive in 2020, even though they lost out on so much money and Disney Plus is not profitable yet. So a lot of people are looking towards the future and not as much focusing on how things are going right now. So with that kind of analysis and discussion of what's been going on with the company recently, I wanted to hop on the charts and talk about three main things that I'm watching before I consider buying into Disney stock going into February. Okay, so here we are looking at these Disney charts. As you can see, the stock has been all over the place uh, in the past couple years. This is going back until July of 2017. So for a while, the stock was pretty horizontal. Then some good things happened. The pandemic hits, and then we've had this incredible rise in the past couple months. And so I kind of want to zoom in and look at what the stock has been doing recently, because we've had these two major moves to the upside, because that has resulted in the stock being very extended. So this first uh, gap up right here comes from the earnings report. This is when they had better than expected news. And this is when they announced that they were going to be having uh, more programming, uh, stuff like the Star Wars stuff that pushed the, the stock up to uh, all-time highs. And it has pushed up a little bit above that. And now it has fallen a little bit. The stock is down close to 4% on the day. But the thing that's really interesting to me is that the stock is very high compared to the 200-day moving average, which is this yellow or gold line. So at this point, the stock has fallen below the 50-day moving average on the purple. And so it's going to be very interesting to see if the stock continues to consolidate and maybe fall further or to see if we're going to have a gap fill down to this 155. The area that I'm going to be looking to buy in is if it comes down, it could be up in the 150, but I'm more looking towards the 145 area because I think that would be a better deal for what you're getting with Disney. When I look at it right now, it is very overextended and there's not exactly a lot of technicals uh, that would make me want to buy in right now. I could consider buying in at like the 155 based off of the gap fill right here. But until the stock falls further, I think this is going to be a stock that I'm going to be setting alerts for down to 150, 145 to kind of see if I can get it at a, a better discount than what I can get right now. Based off of the, the candle that I'm looking at right now, the stock has fallen from the open this morning, has pushed back up. So it's going to be interesting to see what the stock wants to do. It has gone lower this morning, but 
As of right now, I think this is a stock I'm going to be waiting on the sidelines because I think it's a fantastic buying opportunity if it does fall further. But right now, I don't think it's as good as a buying opportunity as some of the other stocks that I've bought recently. So now I want to give my overall thoughts and kind of speculate on where I think Disney stock is going to be going in the future. Based off of what we've seen on the charts, I think it would be a fantastic buying opportunity if the market falls further. Based off of the fact that it is up significantly in the past month and a half as uh, the positive earnings report and then the Disney Plus news has shot it up, I don't think it's a great buying opportunity right now. But based off of what I charted, I think there are some fantastic buying opportunities down in like the $150 mark. While it is up significantly in the past, their main part of their business with the parks I think is a very optimistic part of their business going into 2021. And based off of the locations of all their parks, I think this gives them a high chance of having a majority, if not all of them, to reopen at, at some point in 2021. The vaccine has started to roll out, and while the rollout in the U.S. has not been as effective as what we've seen in some other places, it makes me feel hopeful that we can get these parks up and running by the end of this year. And based off of the beating of the expectations for Disney+, Plus, the fact that they've already reached our subscriber goal, when the goal was to reach that number by 2024, I think it's very possible that if we see some very positive news or some better expectations on when Disney Plus is going to become profitable, I think that can be a huge boost to the company. And I'm expecting them to kind of give some sort of an update because the last time they talked about profitability was more than just a couple quarters ago. So I think the numbers are going to be updated and it's going to be very curious to see if they have some very positive outlook on the profitability of Disney Plus, which has been pushing up the stock significantly in the past 12 months. Looking at their net margin and income, they've been very impressive at increasing this number before the pandemic to the point where their net margin was above 20% before the pandemic and obviously it has gone negative considering they did lose money in 2020. But to summarize the bull case for Disney, it's Disney Plus that's been keeping the stock afloat and I think it's what investors and analysts are watching uh, to see the success of the company going forward because this has been a lot of momentum for a stock that has had a really tough time when it comes to their overall books in 2020. This is definitely a recovery play even though the stock is up from the, the highs of before the pandemic hit. So. When the parks reopen, I think that'll be a huge boost to their income and free cash flow. And it'll be very exciting to see if they'll reestablish that dividend because that would be a huge boost to the company that kind of would indicate that the company feels very positive about their outlook for their business. And I think people would jump on board with that and buy into such a well-established company uh, like Disney. And with the vaccine being rolled out, I think it's very possible that parks will reopen again in 2021, even though that is something that's kind of out of their control at this point. Based off the charts, I would be happy to buy if the stock goes down uh, below 150, but it's going to be very interesting to see if a market correction happens, because I think if that happens, the stock is probably going to give back a lot of the Disney Plus gains that they've seen, and I think that would be a fantastic buying opportunity. So I'm going to be setting alerts at the 150, 145, down by that area to see if it ends up going to that level. So overall, I put Disney at a like 7.5 out of 10 at this point. I think it does have the potential to be a fantastic buy going into February, but at this point, the stock is still very overextended and I'm going to be waiting for a potential pullback to be looking at Disney as a buying opportunity. I think it has all of the, the setups to be a great buy in the future, but right now it is a little bit overextended and it has been hyped up a lot. And you can see that based off of how far the current price is away from the 50 day moving average and the 200. So as of right now, I have my alert set. I'm going to wait to see what happens. And the earnings report in early February is going to be a very interesting way to look to see how the company is feeling about their outlook in the next year. So let me know what you feel about Disney stock and let me know what stock you guys would like me to uh, give my analysis and give my opinions on in a future video. I definitely like going more in depth into single stocks, but I know people want to have um, my opinions on a variety of stocks. So I'm going to kind of uh, integrate both of them into the channel. So thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support and I will see you in the next video.